For today's lecture, the topic is on this second type of triaxial test. It's called consolidated androgen triaxial test or CO triaxial test. And this is the, among these three, this is perhaps the most commonly used triaxial test. And one of the reasons why this is so widely used is you can obtain both the drained and undrained or total and effective strength parameters. So you can get both C phi and C prime and phi prime from this consolidated androgen triaxial test. That's why it's very commonly used. And for CU triaxial test, remember we talked about these two stages in a general triaxial test. For CU triaxial test, you also have these two stages. In the stage one, when you apply that all around pressure, we call sigma three, you keep the drainage open. That's you allow the dissipation of excess pore water pressure. So you see during this stage one is zero. And thus you allow the specimen to consolidate during stage one. So that's consolidation. So that's what the first letter stands for, that C. So it stands for consolidated during this up around pressure stage, sigma three. And then in stage two, when you shear the specimen to failure, when you apply that divitor stress, so remember divitor stress delta sigma D is the additional axial loading you put on top to shear the specimen to failure. During this stage, you keep the drainage actually closed. And this is undrained condition. That's what the second letter stands for, CU, okay. undrained test. So you keep the drainage closed, create an undrained condition during stage two. It's called undrained test. And since you keep the drainage closed, the pore water pressure will increase. And we call that excess pore water pressure during stage two delta UD. So that's a pore pressure. And we define Scampton's pore pressure parameter or capital A bar. And this Scampton pore pressure parameter is defined as this delta UD over delta sigma D. Delta sigma D, again, that's the divitor stress you applied during stage two. So this is Scampton's pore water pressure. And then in term of the principal stresses during CU triaxial test, again, you have these major and minor principal stresses but the difference between this one and the CD tracks to test is you have both total and effective measures. So I'll start actually with the total minor principal stress. So this total minor principal stress is your confining pressure actually, sigma three. So this is kept constant during the test. So this is the confining pressure. It's also called the chamber pressure. So that's the total minor principal stress, sigma three. Then the total major principal stress, we call sigma one, is the total minor. So that's sigma three principal stress plus the divitor stress at failure, we call delta sigma d f for failure. So that's the total major principal stress at failure, sigma three plus the divitor stress at failure. And then in terms of effective stress, so remember, effective stress is basically total stress minus pore water pressure. And for effective major principal stress, we call sigma one prime. This is sigma one minus delta U D F. So the effective major principal stress at failure is the total major principal stress minus the pore water pressure at failure, delta U D. And then the effective minor principal stress, sigma three prime, sigma three minus the pore water pressure at failure, delta U D F. So that's the effective minor principal stress, sigma three prime. And I put a note here. So in CO tracks, you test the divitor stress, delta sigma D is the difference between major and minor. In whether you're using the total or the effective stress version, you get the same divitor stress. So the difference is the same. 
sigma one minus sigma three is the same as sigma one prime minus sigma three prime. So it's the same. And let's use F here for failure. So those are basically the principal stresses during a triaxial test, pseudo triaxial test. And this slide shows, this is a specimen failed during the consolidated Andrian triaxial test. And you see uh, this is actually a bulging type of failure. And in terms of the stress strain response here, so this slide shows the deviator stress, delta sigma d, and the pore pressure change during CEO triaxial test. And if you recall what we discussed for the CD triaxial test, so for drain the triaxial test, for CD triaxial test, it's a drain the test. What we measure is the volume change. This is a drain the test. And this volume change, if you recall, can be actually linked to the volume of water drained. So we, we can keep track of the volume train change during uh, during the test. And for CUTXT, TXC, consolidated undrained triaxial test, this is an undrained test. And for undrained test, what you track, what you measure is actually the pore pressure change. That's why on this slide, you see, instead of reporting the volume change, we're reporting this excess pore water pressure change, delta UD. And again, here I'm distinguish this loose sand from dense sand behavior. For loose sand, the deviator stress increases with the axial strain until it reaches the failure deviator stress we call delta sigma DF. So it's a monotonic increasing behavior and same for the excess pore water pressure during this triaxial test for loose sand and NC normally consolidated clay. And for dense sand and over consolidated clay, OC clay, the deviator stress increases to a peak value. That's what we define as the failure. So we call that deviator stress a failure, delta sigma DF, and then it decreases after that peak point. So the specimen basis softens and then in terms of the pore water pressure for dense sand and over-consolidated clay, you notice the pore water pressure is first positive in the beginning. It reaches to the peak value and then decreases and then to the negative region. And this decreasing behavior, if you recall in the CD triaxial test, actually, we talk about this dilation. So this same for CO triaxial, this is due to dilation of the specimen. So simply put, dilation, again, is basically when you shear the specimen, it actually increases in volume. So that's a dilation. And this negative pore pressure is due to that dilation process. So these are typical stress strain and excess pore water pressure behavior during CO triaxial test. And then in terms of the strength parameters, so you want to get those uh, strength parameters from CU triaxial test. Um, there are two versions, basically two sets of parameters, one for total stress strength parameters, one for effective stress strength parameters. So let's focus on the total version first. So this solid circles, there are two solid circles here. These are basically two more circles at failure. They correspond to two different specimens made of the same material. So this is the total stress more circle. So this is one of the two specimens shown on this slide. And the corresponding failure envelope, the solid line again, so this one here. So this is the total stress failure envelope. And the equation for this uh, failure envelope is tau f sigma. So tau f is the shear strength. This is shear strength is sigma, that's the normal stress on the failure plane times tangent of total stress friction angle phi. And notice here that C is zero. So what's shown on this side are basically sand or normally consolidated clay specimens. So that C parameter is approximately zero. So that's why all these failure envelopes pass this origin. So that's the total stress. And the stress parameter you get is this 
total stress friction angle phi. And then the dashed line. So there are two dashed line Mohr circle. So these two are the effective stress. Again, there are two circles corresponding to two different specimens of the same material, basically. So this is specimen one. And for this effective stress Mohr circle, you can also fit a failure envelope. And that's the effective stress failure envelope. So this dashed straight line here. So that's the effective stress failure envelope, similar equation, except you use the effective normal stress on the failure plane. And then this friction angle you got, this is the drained or effective stress friction angle. So you got this. Again, you can get both the if total stress and effective stress strength parameters from this CU Traxel test. I also include a note here. So remember we talked about the failure plane, the theta angle. So the angle of this failure plane is related to friction angle. And for CO track CO test, because you have two friction angles, basically, one for total stress, one for effective stress, then the question is which one to use. And the answer is you use the effective stress more circle or more failure envelope. to determine this angle theta. Again, if you look at this equation here, it's 45 plus phi prime over two. So phi prime, that's the effective stress friction angle. And the reason being the shear strength of soil is controlled by the effective stress in the specimen. So it's not controlled by the total stress, it's controlled by effective stress. And this relates back to what we discussed in chapter nine, the effective stress. The effective stress is green to green contact force per unit area. So that's really what controls the strength of soil. So that's the basically the strength parameters from CO track CO test. In, in terms of the link of these two parameters to the principal stress values, and there are two sets of equations. Equation 12.36 and 12.37. And the way you get these two equations, okay, rather than memorizing these equations, uh, it's actually better to understand how you get these two. So I'll start with the total stress one. So this is the total stress. And it's also called undrained angle of uh, shearing resistance. And for this total stress, the way you get this equation 12.36 is basically make use of this more circle. So let's focus on the solid one. So this is the failure point. So you can pick either one. Let's call this O. And let's call this point M. The center of the Mohr circle, let's call N. Because M is a tangent point of the failure envelope to the Mohr circle. So if we connect M to the center, so this is center. We know this is a right triangle. So OMN is a right triangle. The inclination of this solid line, the failure envelope is the friction angle. That's the undrained friction angle. So then you can calculate this sine of phi as MN over ON. So that's the sign of this angle phi. I'm looking at this right triangle OMN. MN is the radius of the Mohr circle, which is one over two. This is a total stress Mohr circle. So it's one over two sigma one minus sigma three. And then ON is the center of this Mohr circle. It's one over two sigma one plus sigma three. And from this equation, then you can calculate the angle phi here. So phi is sine inverse of sigma one minus sigma three over sigma one plus sigma three. So that is basically how you get this equation 12.36. Uh, and then for 12.37, it's basically the same process. Okay. So you get this sign inverse, but this time using the effective stress measure. And then this last term here, 
This is obtained by basically substituting to get this last expression. You basically substitute the effective stress sigma one prime as sigma one minus delta u d f, and also substitute sigma three prime by the total minus pore water pressure. And that's how you get this last one in term of total stress and pore water pressure. So that's equation 12.37. In the Skempton's pore water pressure parameter A bar at failure, we call A bar F, is simply the, the pore water pressure at failure over the divitor stress at failure. And this AF value for normally consolidated clay is between 0.5 and 1. And for over consolidated clay, this AF is between negative 0.5 and 0. So you have negative pore water pressure, remember, due to the dilation process. So that's why this AF is a negative for over consolidated clays. So that's a very quick introduction of this CO triaxial test. And, um, how you use these test results to obtain shear strength parameters.